Hey everyone out there in the land of YouTube, this is Annette Dion. I am the host and founder of the Psychic News Network, and it's Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. Uh, let's get to the news, shall we? The moon today has been in Capricorn, and it's now... Hang on a second. <laughs> Hang on! Oh, okay. Actually, it went into Aquarius in the wee hours of the morning. It did. Capricorn and Aquarius are very different energies. So, and the moon was in Taurus. I mean, the sun is in Taurus. The sun's in Taurus during Earth Day. Sorry if I confused you. <laughs> Not an astrologer, but I know a little bit. Okay, so... Hope you're having a good Saturday, if you're watching this on Saturday. Um, do I have some announcements? My announcements are, if you signed up for the pendulum class, it's happening April 30th, May 7th, and May 14th, and I'm pretty sure that they're filled up. But I am going to continue offering classes, so... So you can send an email to AnnetteDion7 at gmail.com if you want to be on the list for the next classes. Pretty sure May 14th is filled up by now. And if you haven't heard from me, rest assured, I'm going to sort of re recap, you know, see who I have to send correspondence to still. So anyway, that's business. That's housekeeping. Let's see. Uh, I, I have a kind of very general question to start with. And my very general question is, is it going to be in vogue once again at some point in the very near future for the people of America to actually want to be seen as individuals, as good people? Because you may have noticed that what we, what has been glory, glorified over the past well, since Trump, really. Uh, what's been really put in the spotlight is terrible people that have no honor, that have no respect for the United States Constitution, that have no respect for one another, who, if you are feeling in disagreement, that you have to just shoot them down and destroy them, sometimes literally. Um, it doesn't matter if you're greedy and you think about yourself over other people. I'm just saying, this is what we've seen. Case in point, Donald J. Trump. And then, you know, everybody else who falls into that category of people that are just all in it for themselves and don't care about anybody else. Um, you know, malignant narcissists, just, just terrible people that, you know, like Matt Gates, for instance, you know, like, yelling at, you know, the defense person, Austin, I, you know, just like these people that are high ranking, even military officials. I mean, when we think about Trump, when he said, speaking of the military, they're a bunch of losers and suckers. I mean, what is that going to get out of fashion? Because it's terrible. It's just terrible. I caught a little bit of Trump is in Ohio tonight. You know, that J.D. Vance. These are horrible people. They're horrible human beings. And I'm not saying that as an, a judgment. I'm saying that as an observation. There's no love in there. There's no love in their hearts. There's no availability to help their fellow human beings. There's not even a desire in the Republican Party to, to run on a platform of I want to govern for the good of all. Okay? So that's my question. Are we going to see the end of this horribleness? <sighs> the Marjorie Taylor Greens. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Who, who's like in court and under oath and lying and saying she doesn't remember shit. Anyway, excuse me. You know, <laughs> you know how I get. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look, shall we? We're going to pull some cards about that. I hope you had a good, you're having a good weekend. And um, thanks to all of you that, that showed up for our, once again, marathon with Corey last night. 
It's always a blast. I, you know, I like to sort of like review and see what questions and what answers there were, and, and I, I can't even watch the whole thing. It's just too, too much, but we have a lot of fun. And we'll do it again on Tuesday. So thanks for all your support. Okay, so is it going to be in fashion again sometime in the near future for goodness, like, what did I write here? Because, you know, I keep notes now, and I, I definitely write the questions down. Will being a good person be back in vogue again ever? It looks like yes. It looks like it's going to be gradual. And, you know, the thing about life is that when we have one extreme it's like there's a pendulum speaking of pendulums the pendulum swings I think I've done this demonstration before okay so say say if we go this way it's like horribleness and if we go this, this way to the right it's right not not like right wing it's like goodness okay so left is horribleness and right is goodness so left is horribleness so when things have gone really horrible the next step after that is horrible, 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 and then, you know, kind of like less horrible, and then all of a sudden we go to really good, because we have a contrast. We go from this to this. When the pendulum swings one way, then after a little bit of time, it goes the other way. It's the best I could do. <laughs> so we have... It's very gradually going to go in the other direction where we actually see good people being highlighted, being, you know, in the forefront of the news. Um, think of people like Nelson Mandela, you know, um, Martin Luther King, you know, like people that just really stood up, you know, Gandhi, who just really made their mark. That's gonna come back into fashion. How soon? Let's ask the pendulum, how soon is it going to come back into fashion? Will it be by the fall? Okay, the reason that I ask by the fall is because I know the January 6th committee is getting ready to have all these televised hearings and just really unleash all that they have found out, which is a ton probably more evidence than anything in our history the January 6th committee has come up with so so I feel like the summer in the summer we're gonna have a lot of that that's our summer 2022 is going to be a lot of what happened on January 6th being revealed it's going to be in the forefront of the news be curious to see what Fox News is going to do with all that information probably just ignore it as they have some other, you know, big news stories that make them look to make the Republicans look terrible. But I feel like by the fall, people are going to, in general, want to see more good and want to stand for good. Um, the very beginning stages of that happening in the summer. And the sun card is like in the summer. And I do see like a hero. I do see somebody, it's a male who's looking like a hero. Let's ask, is that Joe, Joe Biden? Because Joe Biden needs to be highlighted as doing a hell of a lot of work that's for the good. Is it, is it, is it Joe Biden going to be seen in a more positive light? Kind of see, I kind of see that. So it looks like he's going to do something that's good and be seen in a positive light. I'm not being all, like all Pollyanna. I really do feel like enough already with the, with the, you know, hate. Enough with the hate. Are we done with the hate? I'm telling you. Just know that people that treat you miserable are miserable. <laughs> just, just know that. Not to, you know, gloat over it. I'm just saying, you know, I like I always say, hurt people hurt people. People that are miserable make other people miserable because they're miserable. I hope that sheds a light on something for, for some of us here. McCarthy. <laughs> when we last left our story, we didn't have the news about McCarthy, McCarthy and the, um, the recording of, thank God for investigative journalists. 
it's really important. The story about McCarthy um, saying things like, Trump is on Putin's payroll, which we talked about this last night a little bit. I knew that five over five years ago, and I used to talk about it on my PNNs. I was on Facebook at the time. But I've been talking about that for a long time. So McCarthy actually said that he thought Trump was on Putin's payroll. And, I mean, we'll check the pendulum, but that's not even a question for me. I really feel like, um, I always thought that. I kind of thought everybody else just kind of thought that, too, at a certain point. All right, we'll go with this pendulum. <clears throat> Has Trump been on Putin's payroll? Well, it's saying no, so it's not like on the payroll, but that was just maybe a manner of speaking that McCarthy said. Anyway, McCarthy knew full well that Trump was up to no good and, and doing no good and doing illicit stuff. But the point is, McCarthy went along with it when he realized uh, he might be more powerful if he goes along with uh, Putin's buddy Trump. No, <laughs> pendulum saying that Trump was not Putin's buddy. That means Putin doesn't like Trump. Doesn't mean he doesn't use, he didn't use him. Is, um, okay, was, let's just come out with it. Was Putin, was Putin holding something over Trump's head to get leverage over him? Yes. So what Kevin McCarthy was saying was like, uh, Trump is on Putin's payroll. It was in a manner of speaking. He, he was kind of referring to Trump being, you know, under Putin's control because Trump owed him, owed him that. Okay. Was, did it have to do with properties? No, it didn't have to do with properties. Okay. So Trump and Putin, what was going on there? Some kind of tape, some kind of video that could be used against Trump. This channel is for entertainment purposes only, but it's what I always suspected. It feels like what Putin had over Trump was some kind of surveillance video. I'm not going any further with that at the moment. I'm going to let you use your imaginations <laughs> and figure out what the guys are referring to because I can't say too much. But it looks like surveillance. That that Putin had something that had it been found out by the American people, they would have, I don't know, it's hard to believe, but they would have not wanted Trump to be president. Truly. But when you look like it, look, look at a hypnotized population, like as we speak, maybe, maybe Trump is wrapping it up right now. Well, as I mean, at nine, 10 on Saturday night, maybe Trump is wrapping it up right now. But uh, as we speak, there's like 10,000 people cheering, like at a huge rally for Trump and but I do think it would have, America was a little different prior to the 2016 election. And I do think had the information about Trump via Russia come out at that time, it would have damaged him. I mean, we know the, the tape, the Access Hollywood tape where Trump said, just grab him by the, you know what, you know, uh, women would do anything for him. That didn't actually do it but it put a dent in his popularity for a, a little while but the thing that russia has on trump would have done it we don't know we don't don't know what it is but i have my suspicions and the pendulum said yes anyway meanwhile back at the other news uh i do want to ask about speaking of trump and the rallies is he is trump 100 percent grifting with no intention to run for president. That's what I want to know. I've never thought he's going to run for president in 2024. 
So, is he 100% grifting? I guess that would be... That would be probably a yes or no, but I'm going to look at cards. How about that? He knows he wouldn't win. If he ran for president, he knows he... <laughs> and the guides just said, because he wouldn't have Putin's help. Interesting. He knows he wouldn't win. He's, it's all, he's pretending that he's strong. He's, yes, he's grifting. He's working hard at it. He's very focused on grifting as much as he can. As much as he can grift, as much money as he can get from the cult members is what he's, what he's going to get. So he, uh, he will do more rallies because of, he needs to, he needs to collect money. Um, are the American people going to, the people that are being brainwashed, are they going to elect the heinous conspiracy theory, horrible Republicans? for the House and Senate. That's what I'm looking at. 2022 elections. Are the American people going to go for the heinous, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene types? And we'll look at what's going on with her now, too. Are the American people going to go for that? Well, this is a test. This is a test of our moral strength. This is a really strong test of our moral strength. We're going to hang on to what we have we're going to see the amount of burden that it will be to elect these conspiracy theor theorists, uh, white supremacists, nationalists, so-called Christians, and they're not. Um, they're, the American people are going to see what a burden that's going to be. And that brings to mind, too, the DeSantis scenario with Disney, like that. Like the American people are going to see, oh, this is really going to cost me electing these conspiratorial uh, candidates into office that have no platform and just bash everybody who has one iota of, uh, 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 you know, intelligence. They don't want intelligent people. So I feel like the American people, it's going to be challenging but I feel like the American people are going to hang on tightly to what... Well, this is almost out of fear. The American people are going to vote for more Democrats be, out of fear of what could happen. So the reason I brought up the DeSantis thing, and we'll get into that in a minute, is because DeSantis telling Disney they can't have their independent status anymore of Disney World means massive burden for the people of Florida the taxpayers. I heard that the housing costs are, are just astronomical, really, really high right now. Um, like, uh, like property owners are gouging their tenants. It's bad. So, I don't think that the conspiracy theorists are going to get ahead, like the J.D. Vances, and there's so many, there's too many to name. Um, and that's, and I feel like that's because, and so I feel like the Democrats will take the House in November, and it's really because people get like, oh my gosh, they're like, they're going to be hurting more if they elect these people. I don't know what's going to make people wake up. And it's not like total wake up. It's not like total epiphany time. I'm completely transformed. It's not like that. It's more like, oh, is this going to be hard on my pocketbook? Is this going to be hard? You know, like, what is this? What are these candidates going to plan to give me? in terms of less hardship or more hardship. So since I brought up DeSantis and Disney, we might as well go there. DeSantis and Disney. Um, did DeSantis bite off more than he can chew? You know how many times this line keeps coming into my mind? It's really striking. Blind with power blinded by lust for power we're seeing a lot of that right now and it's coming down to the wire and it just seems like there's a more frantic energy around it that's what DeSantis is, has got going on right now down down to the wire feeling more and more desperate so doing the more desperate taking the more desperate measures it's a power grab 
And, you know, this Disney thing is a total power grab that DeSantis has done. He hasn't thought it through. He is blind with lust for power and not thinking about the consequences. And it's funny with DeSantis, it's just like, he's like Trump in the sense that they don't see the other side of what they're doing. They only see like, you know, we, you may know that Fred Trump, uh, was really into the power, power of positive thinking, which I'm totally into that too, but they, you can also use the stuff to be damaging too, you know? So, so DeSantis has that thing that Trump has where no matter what, I'm going to get through my thinking, through my determination, through my will, I'm going to get what I want. And they never think about the other side, like what if they don't? I mean, if you're going for good good things, that's one thing. That's, you know, it's nice when it works when you're going for things that are beneficial. But they have that going on. Because you can do affirmations for anything, right? You can say, I want to be a good and prosperous and loving person and, you know, say that over and over and that's what you kind of, you know, morph into more and more. Or you can say, I want everything. I want everything I lust for and I don't care what happens to anybody and you can get that. So they just use the power of their thinking to really focus on negative things that hurt people. In a nutshell, right? So is DeSantis, uh, <laughs> now I forgot the question. Is DeSantis going to lose power because of this Disney, this move against Disney? Well, that kind of looks like losing power. I feel like people are coming to DeSantis like lawyer types and they're going, dude, well, I'm not really sure how you're going to get out of this, but uh, you could try this angle or you could try that angle, but not sure if it's going to work. But once again, the Five of Swords is going to be a lot. Of, this, this, this card seems to be signifying uh, court and lawyers, so there's going to be a lot of back and forth, a lot like jousting. Oh, interesting. This is the card of uh, uh, what have I done? Looking down, he had an opportunity. He didn't take it. Ron DeSantis. He had an opportunity to do something less damaging. Uh, yeah, we'll just put it like that. And he opted out. That's the, 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 the opportunity to do good was there, but he opted out. Is this going to affect his... Um, Deciding whether to run for president is is what happens with Ron DeSantis in Florida Gonna affect This is gonna affect his decision to run for president or not Very interesting So let's just ask is Ron DeSantis going to announce that he's running for president? Weird, because everyone says he's going to run for president, and I'm not getting that. Could change, but uh, uh, it's not the energy's not lining up for that right now. And the guys just said lawsuits. I feel like Ron DeSantis has so many lawsuits coming at him. It's just like, it's like that card in the other deck, the Ten of Swords, where, um, or the Nine of Swords, where it just there's just swords coming from everywhere. Which you know what? I'm going to switch to that deck right now because this is Corey's favorite deck. Because it just feels like uh, the swords are more pronounced in, in this one. Just in case I see swords, I can. I like to see swords when they're against people. I don't want to be winning because they're dangerous. Okay, so um, these cards are really charged to a little bit more than those other ones because um, I use them more now. I kind of switch them up. I think all readers do that. All right, so I want to know more about that because it's saying DeSantis is actually not going to run for president because he's going to have so many lawsuits to deal with. And I feel the same way. I've always felt the same way about Trump. Um, but with Trump, it's more like um, that plus health issues. So let's see. I told myself earlier I wasn't going to make this video too long, but I have so much to cover. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I don't know why I picked four cards. Okay. Yeah, this is the card I was thinking of. Isn't that funny? 
That's why I pulled this deck out, because I was thinking DeSantis, and this card was popping into my mind. I'm like, it's like that card, the Nine of Swords. Uh, these are the lawsuits coming at DeSantis from everywhere. And look, the, the columns are, you know, crumbling. It's like the fall of Rome. It is like that. It is like that. Blind with lust for power. Blind. Key word. Can't see what he's doing. You know, when you made a mistake, but Ron DeSantis is a min malignant narcissist sociopath, so just telling it like it is. And it, he's going to be in this sort of morass of like ugly, icky energy and like, how did I get here? I didn't, I'm not supposed to be here. This is Ron DeSantis thinking because the lawsuits are going to come out of, out of everywhere. And I feel like. Oh, God, these are terrible cards for Ron DeSantis. They're really bad. This is stalled negotiations, stalemate, kind of, the Four of Swords and the High Priestess. People have the, the dirt on DeSantis. Interesting. There are people that are holding their cards, so to speak, about DeSantis that are not showing their cards yet that are getting ready to. Is it Disney? Is that what we're looking at? Does Disney know stuff about DeSantis that they're going to reveal? Yeah, there's something that Disney knows. Like, they know they know where the chink in his armor is. Whenever I tune into the, the Disney lawyers, uh, it's real similar to the Merrick Garland um, it, energy in that they are not going to reveal what they know and what they're going to do to Ron DeSantis until it's time. Um, and, and until it's a, until it's like, we're, we have all our ducks in a row. We're all our flamingos in a row if we're talking about Florida. And it's not, it, don't expect things to happen quickly with the Ron DeSantis versus Disney, you know, debacle. But Disney's on top. I don't know how much Disney's worth. I, I will look that up, but it's in the billions. And I don't think Ron DeSantis has access to billions of dollars. I don't. Let's go to Marjorie, shall we? Oh, Marjorie, I feel like singing a little Marjorie song. <laughs> See, saw Marjorie dog. I don't know. I'll think of something. That she could sit on the witness stand and lie her butt off the way that she did. I saw the 2015, I think it was 2015, depositions with Trump. You might have seen this, videos of Trump, um, you know, and he, ha he, he was being sued for having Trump University, which, you know, was, he scammed a whole bunch of people and, you know, made, made believe it was a legit university and people signed up and they stole their money. And I don't know exactly the details of that. But anyway, my point is that Trump sat there through that whole deposition and I believe it was 2015. And he said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't remember, I don't know, I don't recall, I don't, I, but he's, but remember, he's a, he's an incredible, stable genius, but he doesn't remember, but he brags about those dementia tests that he took and he passed with flying colors and the doctors couldn't believe it, but <laughs> that was later, but anyway, but he, he didn't remember anything. Marjorie Taylor Greene, straight out of the Trump playbook, I don't recall, I don't recall. I don't recall to things that she had said repeatedly on Twitter and on Facebook and on, I don't know, YouTube. And it just, I'm telling you what you already know. But anyway, I'm just venting. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> I recommend venting and I recommend kickboxing. I don't kickbox, but I just, I, I find myself recommending that to people a lot. You know, if there was a place right down the street, I'd probably go. Because I just think it's good. It's good to like to vent or talk to your friends or something or start a YouTube channel and talk to your camera. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, what's going to be the outcome? Honey pie? 
Oh, and gosh, she just, she's so, what is the word? Arrogant. Um, Self-aggrandizing. Uh, I, nobody can touch me. And she really was sitting up there feeling like she was, oh, look how beautiful I am. I don't, I don't know where that came from. I was like, really? But the thing that really got me was the little cross. You know, these things that used to be symbols of goodness, like the American flag, you know, in a way, is a symbol of patriotism anyway, just desecrated. The cross has lost its meaning if it meant Christianity and goodness to anybody. And K Kaylee McEnany was the other one. Anyway, well, here's, the, here's how Marjorie Taylor Greene is feeling. There you go. That's why I wanted to, to use these cards, because it's, it's very... What we're after, these are good cards for the... This is the Cosmic Tarot for the political um, readings. Um... Because I've used them so much for the political readings. Just in terms of what's going to happen. This is the jail card. This is justice. And the Constitution. The lawyer for free speech for people, I think it was. Um, pretty much one hands down. I'm not sure what is planned. I don't know enough about the procedural you know, what goes on next, but it looks like she did not win this one. Even if, even if she thinks she does, she did win it, or if, you know, if, is nothing going to happen to her? Or if nothing happened, I'm just saying, she just, she ruined her future for herself. She just looked so bad. I don't think people admire what they saw on the, on the stand there. Is, um, is she going to be allowed to run for office again? No. Marjorie Taylor Greene has jeopardized her opportunity to run for office again. But it's going to get a little crazy. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go through this again. Marjorie Taylor Greene, is she going to be allowed to run for office again? No. She's not going to be allowed to run for office again. I think they're getting a little crazy. I think we already saw that. Let's take a look at, I mean, we heard, I heard it in a few places. I couldn't watch what was going on. First of all, I was busy. And second of all, you know, just like tonight, I couldn't watch the Trump rally. And I couldn't watch Marjorie Taylor Greene yesterday because it's getting slimier, actually. It really is. It's getting slimier. So it's just, it's harder. So that's, that says something, you know, when the dark gets darker, the light gets lighter. So let's take a look at why Matt Gates was wearing a bulletproof vest, because that's what I heard. I didn't really see it till somebody pointed it out to me, but why was he wearing a bulletproof vest? The guide said so people would make up stories. Because Matt Gates is feeling like he wants people to be talking about him. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, the moon. He wanted to get an emotional reaction. Matt Gates wore a bulletproof vest because he wanted to freak people out a little bit. And he doesn't like not being the center of attention. Isn't that funny? The emperor... Um, It was like to, it was like a show of, um, gosh, it's the oddest thing. Why did he wear a bulletproof vest? He wanted the attention. It just looks like he wanted attention. And he wanted to get a, an emotional reaction from people. He wanted to scare people a little bit. And then, you know, that's what it looks like. So if he wore a bulletproof vest, it would make people afraid that maybe he was expecting you know, I don't know, Proud Boys or something to, to show up. And speaking of Proud Boys, Marjorie Taylor Greene said she didn't know who they were. And the thing that's so infuriating is, like, 
it's such an insult to your intelligence and, and I, I think that's really intentional unless she's really just that stupid like don't be telling me you don't know who the proud boys are don't be assuming that I'm stupid don't be insulting me like that that's the kind of feeling you know but she does it on purpose Ms. CrossFit she's a mom which scares me anyway maybe she has smart kids you know the guys are just showing me like Kelly and Conway you know I don't know why George stays with her but anyway what is McCarthy thinking right now Jeez, talk about flipping and flopping. He should go back to Florida and put his flip-flops on and just, you know, jog around the pool at Mar-a-Lago. Kevin McCarthy. He likes Mar-a-Lago. The guys are like, he really likes going to Mar-a-Lago. He makes him feel, maybe he gets, maybe people applaud for him some or something. So Kevin McCarthy, how's he feeling right now? Mr. Flip-Flop. Mr. I'm going to ask him for to resign, to ask Trump to resign after January 6th because this is bad and, and the, we can't tolerate this. And then all of a sudden he goes and just kisses as you know what. and Flip flop. How's he feeling right now? Is Kevin McCarthy scared? The word threats is coming. Okay. So I'm asking, is Kevin McCarthy scared right now? How is he feeling? And, and I get the word threats. So I actually... I actually think that Kevin McCarthy is going to resort to making threats to keep himself from being prosecuted. I don't, I'm not necessarily talking about violence. How's Kevin McCarthy feeling right now? Well, the hyper, he's trying to cover up. He's trying to cover up more. So he's thinking hide, hide, hide more stuff hide more stuff. I had said this before. I had said it was going to get to be like a, you know, with with all of them, I think. it's They're going to be dancing around like Lindsey Graham is going to be dancing around, dancing around, dancing around going, well, maybe if I go this way, they won't see me. And maybe if I go this way, they won't see me. But, you know, eventually the jig is up because the Ace of Cups is the January 6th commission and they're overflowing information. Their, their cup overfloweth with, with, with evidence. And Kevin McCarthy is kind of afraid of that. Kind of afraid of that, as he should be. It's the Six of Pentacles, January 6th. So how is he feeling? Like he wants to hide. <laughs> That's how he's feeling. Um, is Kevin McCarthy going to be prosecuted? For anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I just got yes. So there you go. I, I mean, I'm just reminded that I was uh, a, a month ago saying I see footage. I see surveillance camera footage of Kevin McCarthy giving a tour to people who were later to be insurrectionists. I, I can't believe that we're going through this, and it just it just feels like it keeps getting worse. But don't lose hope, okay? Mark Meadows, okay. What's 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 going on with Mark Meadows right now? Remember the text between him and Don Jr. for one. For one, I recommend taking notes because it's really I mean just about the news and everything because it's really hard to keep track, which is why I got a notebook so I can kind of go. Oh, and what was going on a week ago? And I, you know what happens? Totally would have, like, forgotten because of all the other news that comes up. Not everything, but some of it. Some of it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I can't believe I forgot about that because there's just so much more other news. I dropped a card. The lover card. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, sweet. Uh... I just feel like the guides want us to see this, to just have hope that the love that we have for each other, it doesn't have to be romantic love, I'm just saying, the love that we have for each other is our saving grace. You know, the normal people that can love. Mark Meadows. Not everybody can. You have to feel sorry for them. You have to feel sorry for the people that can't love. You don't have to, but you know what I mean? It's like... That can't be a very happy 
place to be. We already went over that. Mark Meadows keeps appealing to King Trump. King Trump. <laughs> Tyrant Trump. Mark Meadows thinks he's going to get away. He's going to get off easy. That's what he thinks. He, he, Mark Meadows is, I mean, he's lining it up to be able to, I don't know, to run away somehow. Mark Meadows, he's lining it up. He's making some kind of a plan. It looks like he's making plans with lawyers. To do what? Two more cards. Mark Meadows, what is he making plans for? To re... <laughs> Mark Meadows is making plans to rewrite the story of January 6th. And the guides just said Fox News. Well, that kind of makes sense. But he will look like a philandering fool in front of the January 6th committee. Which tells me that Mark Meadows is going to be called in to the January 6th committee. All right, there's that. And then now all these cards are flipping around and they want me to look at them. They just flipped. Mark Meadows' world is going to get uh, very uh, disrupted, very much disrupted. The January 6th committee has a lot on Mark Meadows. What he's doing is he's actually... Mark Meadows is planning his alternate story. Remember the alternate facts thing? Speaking of... Uh, I mentioned Kellyanne Conway. Okay, the Fool card's coming up too. Yeah, you know, people, this is just, this is just to the point where it's, it is definitely whack-a-mole. It's uh, for the Republicans. It's definitely whack-a-mole, whack-a-mole. What you know, we're gonna see so much of that that we're gonna just, you know, it's just exhausting, and we will have had enough. And, you know, grassrootsofdemocracy at gmail.com. Send us an email. There's no obligation. Just show up at the meetings and listen if you, if you don't have time to do anything else. Send an email to grassrootsofdemocracy at gmail.com and type A-Y-E in the subject line. We will put you on the list. Please get out of this sense that somebody's going to ask you for something or you're going to be obligated or you're going to feel under pressure. Don't even go there. Look at the Ukrainians and what they're willing to do to save, you know, their freedom and their human rights. Democracy is a spiritual idea. It's a spiritual ideal. And it's hard for us to be perfect. Nobody's expecting perfection, but we are... I believe we're expected to be good people. I do. I'm, you know, call me crazy. <laughs> Let's do one more question, shall we? Uh, Russia is banning all textbooks that have to have anything. Remind you of anyone? Russia is banning textbooks that have anything to do with a mention of Ukraine. So Putin is attempting, I should just say Putin. Putin is attempting, ooh, he's looking. I, you know, when I tune into Putin's energy, I feel, I feel like he, like, maybe he's not eating because I feel nauseous. I feel like, I don't feel nauseous. I feel like Putin feels nauseous. Is it poison? Is somebody trying to poison him? Gosh, I, don't, I can't even see that that would be possible. Does Putin feel nauseous? Is that what I'm, is, is he feeling sick? That's interesting. Anyway, I started talking about Putin because I was noticing that I wrote down that that, that he's banning textbooks from uh, that have any mention of Ukraine. Talk about trying to erase a whole a whole countries of people. It's um I'm not going to tune into that too much because it's just too heinous. Um at the moment to tune into it is just like you can't go there for too long. 
I, I think it's just, it's, it's too dark. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that. I mean, these don't, so um, the point is, Ron DeSantis is taking many, many pages out of the fascist playbook. As is Greg Abbott, as is Trump. Um, but you know, Abbott and DeSantis are going even further. Whoever would have thunk it, right? I mean, they're all heinous. It's just, it's just like DeSantis and Abbott are even taking it further than Trump does. Uh, but since I mentioned Putin, we'll sort of wrap up with this. Uh, what, okay, was there anything else wicked important? What's going on with, okay. I was going to look at Giuliani and all that, but we can save that for the next time because that's kind of the same old story. Um, Giuliani on, uh, I would never watch The Masked Singer if you even paid me, um, but just that he was on The Masked Singer. Giuliani is cuckoo, cuckoo, f f cocoa puffs. So, you know, and it's really, it's, it's like, it's almost like he belongs locked up in an institution, but nothing against people in institutions, but it might be jail. Uh, Putin, we're looking at Putin. We're looking at, uh, I feel like he's really sick. I kind of have been saying this a little bit and not going into it too much, but I really feel as though the Russian people are going to turn on Putin and they're going to take him out. I really, I've been feeling that for a long time. And I've been feeling about like the people around him are going, are plotting to take him out. And, and I, I said that months ago, so we'll just see. Um, Putin's keeping it a secret that he's not feeling well. He has people around him that are covering up for him that he's not feeling well at all. Well, how could he? I, you know, does it take a psychic? But I just, I feel like he's, he's delusional and that it's kind of physically based in the sense that, uh, kind of, that he feels so terrible that he can't even think straight. And the guys just said he knows he's losing. He knows he's losing. Um, yeah, there's a lot coming at, coming at Putin. He knows he's losing. Uh, I have been asked about the election in France. I do see Macron winning. And because the people in France, one of the reasons is that the people in France would be too freaked out to change, uh, to have a changing of the guard right now. Um, it's unfortunate that so many people would consider voting for the friend of Putin. And I don't trust the polls that say that Le Pen is even that close. And just seeing a picture of Le Pen, totally, I feel like she's a reincarnation of some sort of, I don't know, somebody from the Second World War that was heinous. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. But I, I see Macron winning. Um, please pray for the election in France to go smoothly and without violence and all that. I'm not saying that I see violence, but let's just pray for the right outcome. We need, we need, you know, just put more positive energy there. We need for France to stay in NATO. And we need the United States to be run by Democrats and not Republicans because Republicans don't even know that we need NATO to stay safe in the world. <sighs> I've said everything I can say for tonight. Tomorrow is Sunday, which means I do Church of Spirituality at 1 o'clock Eastern Time Live. You can watch it anytime afterwards when it posts. And um, thank you for all of your support and all of your love. And thank you for all that attend Church of Spirituality. I know the word church throws people for a loop, but it's not like that. Okay. <laughs> love you. Namaste. See you soon.